Welcome to Comfort Time with Antony K, where we share testimony stories. Our story for today is Let Go and Let God. God makes a way where there is no way. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you long for something? You look at the situation and you're thinking, mm, nah, how? You say, okay, I will trust God, but you keep on thinking, mm, even God, what is there for him to work with? But God doesn't need anything to work with. God is God, and he works miracles when he is ready, when he wants, and when it's time. And so, I uh, got married early, as I've explained in other videos, and uh, I had my child early and my husband after I finished his university also got into his first job. He was doing such a good job of it that his company decided to send him abroad for his masters, to send him to New Zealand. So we were very excited about going abroad because we were thinking okay that now will open a lot of doors for us, a lot of doors for him. And so everything was arranged and we went to New Zealand. It was very exciting. But there we met a lot of other international students uh, who were also some doing their masters, some doing the first degrees, some doing even higher. So we discovered that there was a community in uh, the university community where the community gave uh, help to international students. There, was, there were many different programs. There was a program for those who are non-English speaking, where they could go to learn English. And of course, I was coming from an English speaking country, so I didn't need that. And there were places where you could actually go to learn how to cook, how to, um, you know, the, the new recipes from there, as you know, in Africa, we have different type of uh, recipes. Although we do mix and match, sometimes we do Western recipes sometimes, but they, it was a way of like bringing everybody together to um, have a place to be, especially for the international wives, because the husbands would be at school and the wives and children would have um, nothing to do. So there was a crash, there was a kindergarten, there was a lot of uh, places even for the children to be. And I found that very interesting. So now uh, we were invited to go and learn cookery. But like I've explained in one of my videos, uh, Heal Your Community, and the link will show for those who may have missed it. I learned how to cook very early as my mother was teaching cookery, crocheting and all the rest of it. So I didn't need that kind of training. Then the other place was for learning English. I didn't need that. The other place was for warm clothing and we had that provided for, you know, um, in the budget as we traveled. So I didn't need that too. So now everybody was busy looking after their homes and their children using the systems there and I was getting restless. I was getting bored because I didn't need any of those things. So what I did is I started looking around for what else I could do and I discovered that there was a gym. And if you remember in the video that I shared uh, decent opportunities, I talked about being a student at Ibenga Girls Secondary School and being one of the six girls who traveled the world playing badminton. I actually even share a recipe in that video and you should check it out. It's a very nice recipe. I'm not going to talk about it. I'll let you go and find out what it was that I actually shared with the hotel where we stayed and I made quite a bit of money from just that one recipe. So I, having traveled like that and having played badminton, I really wanted to check out their gym. And when I went there, they told me, no, actually we, the, gym, the gym offers certain uh, games, but for badminton, they showed me where to go. 
So I went and I was really having a great time. So now I decided after my games to go and pick up my daughter because I used to just drop my daughter. I wouldn't be with the other international wives. So I went to pick my daughter and I found this um, Kiwi lady. And Kiwi just means a New Zealander. You know, those who know their, their bird is called the Kiwi bird. And uh, that's their national bird. And so we used to tease all the New Zealanders by like calling them Kiwis and uh, they lovingly accept that. So this uh, lady, not only did I call her my, my a Kiwi lady, I also called her my fairy godmother and I'll explain why. So uh, she saw me and she was like, you're different. I was like, oh, why? She says, I've been seeing your daughter, but I don't see you at all these foras. I come here to check on the international wives women so that I see how, what help they need. But I've never seen you in the, um, in the groups. So I was like, oh, I actually am uh, trained in cookery, crocheting and uh, these other things and I don't need um, help with uh, warm clothing as that was um, put in our budget so I find that um, I don't need the stuff that are here so I was looking for something that was not here and I found something so she looked at oh you have a racket I said yeah they said, oh, whose is it? I said, it's mine. I was actually playing um, the badminton. You play badminton? That's new. I said, yes, I love badminton. So I shared with her my story of traveling abroad and playing badminton as a student before I got married. So that's how now she was like, I would like to meet your husband. I was like, yeah, sure. So we came home. She met my husband. He was very excited. And we even showed them our pet. We had a, a sheep as a pet. New Zealand has um, got a lot of sheep. So one of we, instead of having a puppy, we had a sheep as a pet. And my daughter loved that one. So then the following week, she came with her niece. And her niece, uh, very nice lady, she came with her daughter. And we became very good friends. And she told her my story and said, imagine she, she, she goes, she used to play badminton and you know, she prefers games. And I, was, I used to love reading. So she was like, what exactly would you be interested to do? Because you don't seem to be interested in the normal things that um, the wives to the international students do when they come here. I said, you know what I would really like to do is um, study travel consultancy because I have traveled a lot and I was trained as a secretary but it's not something that I really wanted to do but I would like to do travel consultancy but you know looking at the situation I said it's something that right now my husband cannot manage so it's yeah that's something I'd have loved to do oh okay okay so we talked about it had our tea and the following week she invited me and my daughter and my husband to go for lunch at her place so we went we ate and we really had a good time and then she came back to the house the following week and she was like okay call your husband tell him we are going out for the day so I was like yeah sure so I called him told him okay I'm going away, so and he had his own keys to the house, so it wasn't such a big problem. So that's how we went. And you will not believe where she took me. She took me to a university which had many different schools. She looked for, for an opening in travel consultancy, and there was an opening. And so I got um, enrolled as a student, and she paid for the entire course the entire course she paid for it i didn't know what to say to her i was for sure you are my fairy godmother so we went home and shared with my husband who was very excited and she showed me which bus stop to use to go to the same university and then uh, now we had to agree with my husband that because now i was going to be busy i had a schedule of my own and he had his own schedule 
and now we have to agree how who picks the child who drops the child who cleans who cooks yes you heard me right i said who cleans and who cooks you know it's crazy our african men will clean and cook when we live with them abroad but they will not do that when we are here in, uh, in africa or in zambia but that's something i've seen again they, they think uh, i'm going to be laughed at i don't know why but um i think it's a culture that we need to um, continually you know do even when we are back home so anyway um we agreed and so i started going to school and all was going well until his school was going well he finished and he started working there i also finished and i started um, wanting to look for a job but jobs were not that easy so first i got a job um, picking mushrooms it was very interesting in a mushroom farm and the money was good so i was able to buy a lot of stuff after that i managed to get a job at the um, university um, putting data for the students in the computers and that was really interesting and it too paid very well but now that i had my i'd finished my own training i was curious to know how i could use that put that into action and so i said calling home back home to find out how things were and everybody was like ah you guys we've seen your pictures you are really having a good time don't even come back here things are rough the economy is bad and what what so every time people were saying the economy was bad the economy was bad but every time they send pictures they sent us pictures of a new car they had just bought they sent pictures of where their houses the houses they were building were we are now at roof level we are now we have now roofed our house i was like something doesn't add up so i started giving my husband problems i said my husband we have to go back he was like are you not listening these people are saying things are bad back home why would you want to go back we've got everything here we're living our best life i'm like no something does not add up how come they're saying the economy is bad but they are buying new cars and they are building houses and we don't even have a home of our own back home I think we need to go back home. He didn't like it, but um, soon after that, I got pregnant with our second child. And I don't know if it's uh, hormones or what, but this time I was not negotiating. I really wanted to go back home. So eventually he said, okay, I'll start the process of us uh, going back home. And so I called my fairy godmother and uh, told her we may be going back home and um, I will never forget you and blah blah blah. So we had lunch, we had dinners. We now wanted to spend as much time together as possible because I knew I was soon to go. And so finally everything was done and we traveled back home. And uh, when I got home, then I had my baby a 3.5 bouncing baby girl and we sat with my husband and was like how what is going to be her name i was like do you even have to think about it let's name her after my fairy godmother and he was like yeah but call her and find out if she's okay with that so i called her and asked her and she said oh i'm so happy you thought of honoring me in that way but i need to give you the real spelling of my name so i was like yeah sure so she said okay my name is leticia pronounced sha but uh, spelled l-e-a-t-i-t-i-a -T -I -T -I -A. and it means joy and if you want to shorten it it's leti l-e-t-t-i-e -T -T -E. so that is what my name is so i'm very particular about how it's spelled and so please make sure that that's how you spell my name and her name 
So we're very happy. So we gave my daughter that name and uh, everything now started going well and we're now happy to be back home. And now the moral of this story is, have you ever longed for something and felt there is just no way to get it? We've talked uh, in another video called God Works in Mysterious Ways. Sometimes God doesn't um, do things in a straightforward way where you can see where you are going. Sometimes it goes in like, you know, this way, that way, that way, and that is God. So that's how now, if you had told me when we went to New Zealand, when we were living there, that I was going to end up meeting someone who would pay for my entire course, because my husband was a student, so we were on a shoestring budget. So there was no way he was going to afford to pay for my training. But God made it possible. So I got trained and I got a lovely aunt, Aunt Lady, my fairy godmother. And so God can make it happen for you. All you need to do is trust and believe. And also it said in Psalm 34 verse 8 that test and see that the Lord is good. So just put our God to the test and he will prove to you that what you want is nothing. I know some other for us say throw it into the universe. Tell the universe what you want and go about having a good time and the universe will bring that right to you. That's what happened to me. So that's how I managed to acquire the training that I had only longed for and thought there was no way of getting it. So I'm asking you to do the same. Is there something you long for, something you wish for? Tell God. I promise you it will happen. Just trust and believe. So. Comfort Time continues. If you have encountered such issues, such situations where you've had favor, unexpected favor, please share with us. We'd be interested to interact with you. Share with us so that everybody can know about your story as well. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up like always. When you give us thumbs up, that is when you like our videos YouTube then shares them with a larger community because then they think it's something that other people should also listen to. So please do that for us and if any of you have not yet subscribed, please do that. It helps to grow the channel and share widely, of course. So Comfort Time continues. See you in the next video.